Today I'm here with uh, Franz Johansson, renowned author, entrepreneur, international keynote speaker, and founder and CEO of the Medici Group. His book, uh, his debut book was The Medici Effect, and it was named one of the best uh, books on innovation by Business Week, and has been translated into over 20 different languages. I myself have downloaded the book on Audible and have seen Franz present in person twice. Last year, uh, he keynoted the um, Great Place to Work conference in San Francisco. So very excited to have him with us this year. So Franz, you were first published uh, The Medici Effect in 2014, or actually 2004. 2004, yeah. years later, why do you think the book is more relevant to Dan? So yeah, I first of all, thank you for uh, having me, Raphael. And uh, I didn't know that you see me twice, uh, but uh, I really enjoyed the keynote. I gave it a great place to work, and I'm very much looking forward uh, to sharing um, some of these insights uh, in a couple of weeks. Uh, so I wrote the book. It came out in 2004, The Medici Effect. And at that time, I would say that um, the world was only beginning to come to terms with what it meant to uh, bring together different cultures, different industries, different disciplines, people from, from, with different perspectives to, uh, to drive innovation, to drive performance, to drive growth. It was, a, it was one of those ideas that was bubbling. Today, it is very different. Um, we've certainly seen it among uh, industries and disciplines. We talk a lot about convergence between uh, uh, media and technology and between all kinds of different industries are, are, are converging and, and, and connecting. But even more interestingly is this idea that diversity and equity and inclusion has, has really become a huge uh, and, and, and risingly important factor for uh, companies all over the world. In fact, throughout all my travels, I've seen this, this rising trend of innovation on the one hand and issues around uh, diversity, equity, inclusion on the other. And it's not an accident that they're both rising because they're all both part of the same phenomenon, which is that innovation comes from bringing together different perspectives and diversity is, the, the, is that process of those different perspectives represent diversity. Inclusion enables you to actually bring them together. So today, it is just far more people that are engaged in trying to understand how to use DEI to drive performance, how to use it to drive growth. And, uh, and actually just a couple of years ago, uh, Harvard Business School Press, who published it in 2004, they reissued it, which is very rare. They reissued it simply because they felt it is even more relevant today than when it came out. Well, how can HR leaders begin bridging the gap between innovation and growth and diversity and inclusion in their organizations? So, you know, um, I think many organizations face this uh, particular challenge today. They are asking their leaders to optimize against two things at once. Okay, so, so on, the, on the one hand, they're asking the leaders to optimize against performance. Like, we, we need this performance side of you, so you gotta, you gotta nail it. And that's becoming increasingly important. But on the other hand, they also ask them to optimize against DEI. It's very difficult to optimize against sort of two things at once. In fact, uh, in fact, it's difficult to optimize against one thing at once. Just optimizing against performance is hard. So what, what we believe and what, what, I've, what we've developed uh, in our work, and we've developed a platform called Renaissance that really captures this, uh, is this idea that actually at a team level and at an organization level, you can use DEI to drive performance. If you can understand how to use diversity and inclusion to drive your team's performance, make it faster, better, more effective, now you're optimizing as only one thing, performance. And so when I think about the role that HR can play, it is to help create that connection, not just to say, hey, DEI matters because you can get better business outcomes. It is you can use it specifically to drive better business outcomes in your team, whether you're in the supply chain, marketing, 
uh, finance, sales, whatever it is that you do, you can actually use it. It's another tool for you to, to, to drive performance and, and growth and innovation. And so that is where we found the most effective place for HR to sort, of, to sort of bring a new way to the leaders to enhance their performance at the team level. Now, I'm, I'm uh, glad that you expressed it in, in the way that you did because uh, I, I too view it that uh, uh, HR professionals may consider them two separate silos and yeah. it, it's key to try to bring them together because it's that's right you stated, challenging just to pass one initiative stand alone yet right. two uh, in in trying to figure out like how do I prioritize are they both 50 50 mm -hmm. Uh, no, right. it's like they're all one uh, together. So That's without right, but, we go ahead. Yeah, well, I was just going to say, but in order to in order to do that, a, a a business leader has to understand why that is, and not just why they have to be able to see it. They have to have sort of this crystal clear line of sight of, wow, if I have, if if I, what does it mean to have an inclusive team, and how do I? How can I see that expressed in the business outcomes and business results that I am responsible for? I mean, that's really where, where the connection gets made. So without giving away too much, <laughs> uh, why should uh, our audience tune in, uh, and, and I believe you're, you're keynoting on, uh, on Wednesday, October the, the 28th, why should they tune in for your presentation? Now, I, I know because I've seen you. So, I'm super excited to why see do you. you again. Why do you think they should? And I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why I think they should. <laughs> well, besides you being a dynamic presenter with a great slide deck, uh, you know, m my reason for bringing you to the conference is because you, I, I thought that you are making those connections and uh, conveying the value of diversity to innovation how different points of views by different individuals, whether race, gender, um, ethnicity, uh, can make a team richer and bring more ideas through collaboration to uh, further business objectives, to grow the organization. That's right, and not only, not only bring better ideas, but also as we become clear during this keynote, uh, how to execute them better. It goes beyond idea creation. It goes to actually these teams are better at making those types of ideas happen. And that's not something that is easily understood. In fact, they even, they're better at understanding what to prioritize, what to focus on. Uh, so, so I'm going to bring that. The, the 28th, on October the 28th, 28th you're, you're going to yeah. come to us and, and you're, you're going to be yeah. in real time and then answering questions live. And, and not only I want to talk about how it is that diversity, equity, and inclusion drives innovation and performance and, uh, and growth, um, uh, but also how we have created a scalable solution to make that actually happen. It's, it's, actually, it's revolutionary, uh, deploying sort of the absolute most cutting edge technology and creating this, um, this a, a really a new way of engaging with teams to drive performance. So I want to I want to share not just uh, the, the 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 theory and the approach, but also solutions to how one can actually make that happen. And so to me, that is um, that is really what everybody's looking for. Um, they it's not enough today to simply say, look, I I I, I have a new idea on how to make this happen. Uh, I can excite you about it. I can inspire you about it. But what actually companies are looking for is is how, how can I take those ideas and how can I quickly scale them in our organization? How can I make them into an integral part of how we operate today or tomorrow? So I wanna, I wanna talk about both of these things and uh, I'm very excited about it. Well, one of the things that I wanna highlight for our audience, because I know that you worked with some very big brands. Uh, I think maybe Nike was one of the brands that you worked with. Was it oh, Google? We, we worked, yeah, we worked with over uh, over 200 of the global 2000, uh, you know, Nike, Disney, even Disney for many, many years. You can, the way they are thinking about diversity and inclusion is, is, is quite different from any of the other, their peers. You know, you can see it in the, the movies, the products, the TV shows, everything else. Um, uh, but finance, uh, the largest insurance companies in the world, uh, uh, retail, um, uh, technology, um, uh, 
sort of sector after sector in industry. Uh, yeah, so, so one of the things that I, would, I would highlight, Franz, is that, or for, for our audience specifically, that you don't have to be a Google to apply this. You can be a small, a medium-sized business. So the, these ideas, these, these tips that you're going to share, everyone can benefit from them and apply them in your own way to your organization. Anyone that does any type of work together with other people, which is basically everybody, even if you, even if you work by yourself, you are going to have to work with other people, uh, benefits from this, because this really comes down to how do we think about our teams? How do we make them diverse? How do we make them inclusive? And through that, how do we make them high performing? So Franz, I uh, thank you for your time today, for giving our audience a glimpse of your session. And, and I'm excited to you. see you again uh, and, uh, and share thank your you. ideas uh, and uh, opportunities for businesses to uh, innovate through diversity and inclusion. So thank you very much and uh, look forward to seeing you in a few weeks. Thank you, Rafael, and uh, the same.